Are you ready to make another quilt? Well, sew along with me from start to finish while I make a really cute Christmas quilt. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. We had such an overwhelming response with our sew along for It's a Snap that we wanted to do it again. Now you guys had lots of questions from It's a Snap. We're gonna try to address as many of those as possible in this video. For instance, Marlene Kay asked for half square triangles. So that was very instrumental in having us choose our next pattern. So we have chosen the Friendship Star. It is from our Quick and Easy book and it has some great half square triangle stars in it that we're gonna be doing and we have fabulous fabric here. Now this is absolutely darling. It's just in time for Christmas. So let's get started and sew. To start off, let's look at our cutting instructions in the book for our Friendship Star pattern. I make all of my labels right at the beginning. I'm just using a three x five index card, but you could use any scrap of paper. I go through my cutting instructions and look for all the text in bold. This tells me what all the final pieces are and what labels I will need. After I have my labels made, I start at the top of the cutting instructions list and cut out each item in the list. I made my first cut with my 24 inch ruler, but I left a little extra on the edge so that I could clean it up. I'm using my square ruler because my 24 inch ruler is not wide enough for the size needed. After I cut my strips, I use my 12 inch square ruler to cut my block from the strip. I do not stack my pieces when I cut. I've never been successful with that. I know it takes a little longer, but I don't feel like I have the control that I want if I stack them. After I cut my blocks, I put them in a Ziploc bag with their label. This keeps all the pieces nice and organized. Now I'm cutting my smaller squares for the Unit B assembly. When you're cutting smaller squares, it is useful to use a smaller square ruler if you have one. I'm using a six and a half square ruler. Now I'm going to cut my fabric number two pieces. We start by cutting long width of fabric strips for our half square triangles. I'll be cutting these into squares in a minute. I went through and cut all of my width of fabric strips at once before I started cutting my squares. If you don't feel comfortable doing this though, you can just do it one at a time. Something we often do in our patterns is to cut multiple pieces from a single strip. For example, in this pattern, we're going to cut three different things from this strip. First, you're going to cut four squares for our half square triangles. Then from the remainder of this strip, I'm going to cut four corner blocks. You can see that I had to trim them down just a little bit. Then I cut a border number two extension. This is just a little bit more fabric to ensure that we have plenty to go all the way around. We do this in an effort to get as much out of the fabric as we can. As you can see, I'm putting my border number two extension into my bag with my other border number two pieces. Be sure to double check your labels before you put them in your bags. I mislabeled my stack of Hasquare triangles as unit A. I caught myself just in time though. When I have to cut a bunch of little squares, I tend to put them in piles of 10. It makes it easier for me to count and keep track of. Moving on to fabric number three. I follow the same process, cutting and labeling all of my pieces. I love that we chose this dark cranberry red as the binding. I also like that it's a more subtle print. This will give your eyes a place to rest in the quilt. It always feels great to finish your cutting. Time to do a happy dance. Now we're moving on to step one, half square triangle block assembly. You're going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of your number two fabric. I'm using a blue water soluble marker. I mark all my blocks at the beginning before I start sewing. I find it more efficient to mark all at once instead of starting and stopping. Now that we have drawn all of our lines, we're going to sew our blocks together. I'm taking the squares I just marked and sewing them to our number three squares we cut earlier. Make sure to sew them right sides together. I'm sewing a scant quarter inch on both sides of the drawn line. A scant quarter inch is just slightly smaller than a quarter inch. I daisy chain my pieces together. I sew all on one side of the line for all of my pieces. I leave them connected and then sew on the opposite side of the line. After I sew on both sides of the line, then I cut them apart. The next step is to cut on the drawn line. There are two ways to make half square triangles. The traditional way is to start by pressing your seams open. Normally I would lay several out next to each other so that whenever I'm pressing, I can do several at once. This lets you just put the iron down once and you only have to pick up the best pressed ones. 
it just makes it a little faster. This table is not very long, so it's not as easy to do that. Now we're going to square them. Your untrimmed half square triangle will be a little larger than the final trimmed size. To trim them, you place the diagonal line on your seam line and you place one edge of your block just inside your final trimmed size. Then you trim two of the edges. Then you turn your block so that the opposite two edges can be trimmed. You will once again place the diagonal line on your seam line. The clean trimmed edges will be at your final trim size. You'll follow this process for completing all of your half square triangles. The second way is to use the slotted trimmer. I use the long edge of my slotted trimmer to cut the pieces on the drawn line. I do this step on all my blocks before I trim. I find that doing it all at once makes it go faster. I look at my slotted trimmer and find the dotted line that matches my trimmed half square triangle size. I place this line on my seam line. I then trim the two sides. Then I use the notches at the same size as the dotted line I was using to trim the points of my triangle. I call them dog ears. You'll continue this process until they're all trimmed. I prefer the trimmer because it takes that extra step of turning and lining your ruler up for a second time out of the equation. You only have to line up your ruler once. You also are cutting through both sides of fabric at the same time so that when you press open the blocks, it's perfectly square. After you trim all of your half square triangles, you'll press the seams open. I find half square triangles to be very forgiving. Even if your seam allowance is not a spot on scant quarter inch seam, the half square triangle will still trim to the perfect size. Okay, I thought we'd take a quick break and look at the fabric that we're working with. So this is a gorgeous Christmas quilt and I just love it. This kit is fabulous. So we have our, our flowers here on a white and it's the red and green and it's so fabulous. Now this is a good one because not only is it kind of Christmas colors, but it really could go all year long. So I love that about this kit. So here's our focus fabric. It is gonna go in our large block of our Friendship Star. Now it's also gonna go in the center of our Friendship Star block here, which is really great because it gives a little interest right there. And we're gonna be showing you how to put all that together. All right, then we have our number two. Very fun, we've got these pine branches here with our flower and you can see it kind of picks that up there. This is going to go in the background of our stars and just a little bit on the border. And then our number three, what a fun red polka dot. You know I love polka dots. This is going to be our actual star here as well as the border and the binding. As you can see the red is just perfect and that little dot picks up all those berries in there which is just perfect. This kit is called Christmas Bouquet. The number is 8023288. Of course, we're using our Friendship Star Pattern from the Quick and Easy Book. Now we are beginning to work on step two, unit A and B assembly. During this step, I like to stack my solid blocks together and my half square triangles together and place them beside the machine. I sew the first two blocks of the unit together, one solid and one half square triangle by chain piecing. I will do this for all my blocks before sewing the other side on. I then cut them apart and stack them. Then I will sew all the blocks to the other side of the half square triangle. Notice how I lay the square next to the block it will be sewn to and then flip the square up so the pretty sides are facing each other. This is very helpful to visually double check that you're putting your square where it needs to go before you sew it. It's also a really great trick if you are using a directional fabric. I find sewing them in this method keeps me more organized and I make less mistakes. Once I have sewn all my pieces together for my unit A, then I will cut them apart and press them. Moving on to unit B. I start by making stacks of my solid blocks and my half square triangles. I choose to move the stack of half square triangles above my solid blocks because I'm going to be sewing the top half square triangle to the solid block first. You want to be extra careful while making this block to make sure that all of your half square triangles are turning the right direction. Make sure to have the book handy for reference. I make my unit B's following the same method I did for unit A. Sew all of one side, sew all of the other side, and then press. Now that we have our units all sewn together, it's time to move on to step three, block B assembly. 
Notice that I'm using the trick again where I lay the units next to each other to double check that they are going in the right direction and then flip one unit on top of the other. I wanna make sure all of my points and my half square triangles match up well. So I'm going to pin them. I match up the pressed open seams and put a pin right through that. I check my seams as I go to make sure they don't get flipped backwards. That's why you see me lifting up my fabric a little. I'm checking to make sure that the seam is still open and lying flat. When I'm sewing my units together, I like to sew all of one side together first using the chain piecing method. Before I sew on the other side though, I do like to press it. This just helps keep it flatter and easier to match the seams on the other side. Notice that one of your unit A's is going to get turned to make both sides of block B. I double check the pattern to make sure I turn my pieces the right way. Once I give it that final press, you can see how pinning those seams really got my corner spot on. And there's my block B's finished. Now we're moving on to one of the best parts. Step four, quilt assembly. First, I'm going to start by laying out all of my rows. Once I have laid out all of my rows, I will stack one row at a time and take it to the machine to sew together. Because we don't have any seams to match on these blocks to assemble the rows, I just worry about putting a pin in the top and the bottom of the block. This saves a little bit of time, but will make sure that my blocks stay nice and even. Make sure to take those pins out as you're going. Sewing over your pins can damage your needle and you'll have to change it more often. When I'm feeding my blocks through the machine, I like to use the seam ripper like a stiletto. I use it to help guide my blocks through the machine when it gets closer to the needle. I like to sew all of the blocks for one row together and then press all of my seams for the whole row. I love the way the fabrics are looking together. This red gives the perfect pop for the points on my star. After I finish pressing my row, I lay it back in its place with the rest of the quilt. Then I stack up the next block and repeat the process until all of my rows are complete. Now that I have assembled all of my rows, I will start sewing them together. I like to sew two or three rows together at a time. For example, this quilt has six rows, so I will sew two rows together at a time. Be sure to match up those seams and pin them to make sure everything matches up. I'm going to use the same method I used earlier when I was pinning my blocks. I always press my seams after I sew two rows together. I love seeing how it starts coming together. After I've sewn all of my sets of rows together, then I start sewing those together. I do this because it is easier to sew smaller sections. Once you have all those rows together, it can get pretty cumbersome. So this helps you from wrestling too much with your quilt. I'm really enjoying working with this pattern. I actually think half square triangles are pretty fun. They can offer a lot of movement in a quilt as well, which gives your eye a lot to look at in the quilt. There's something about the Friendship Star Block that feels homey too. I really think it lends itself well to a Christmas quilt. If you're not looking for Christmas fabric though, don't worry. We're gonna show you some other great options in just a bit. We're almost there. It's time for step five, borders. First, I'm going to sew all of my border strips together. I chose not to trim selvages off before I do this. Instead, I use my selvages as a guide and I sew a quarter inch from that. I treat the selvages like the edge of my fabric, you might say. I'm going to do this step for my border number one and number two. Remember when we cut that border extension for our border number two earlier? Here we go. This is where we use it. I'm just going to sew it onto the edge of one of my other border strips, just like all the other strips. Once I sew all of my border strips together, I will trim and press all my seams. I'm going to trim right on the edge of that selvage line, the one we were using earlier as a guide for our seam. Now that my border strips are sewn, trimmed, and pressed, it's time to add them to the quilt. Friendship Stars Border 1 is just a little bit different than the It's a Snap pattern we did before. This one has corner blocks. Typically, when you're adding quarter blocks to a quilt, You'll measure the top and bottom of your quilt and cut border strips to match that. But if you don't have a large cutting mat, that can be really difficult. So I do it a little differently. First, I pin my border strip to the top of my quilt. Then I trim it even with the edge of my quilt. I'm going to keep my strip pinned on. Then I'll repeat this step for the bottom. 
I find this a much more manageable way to do corner blocks, especially for those who are maybe just using the kitchen table to do their cutting. Once my top and bottom border strips are trimmed to the quilt size, I take my quilt over to the machine. I just unpin the last pin and sew my corner blocks to the end of my border strip. Once these are sewn on, I will press the seam. I'm going to keep these borders pinned on, but fold and pin the quarter blocks in so that they won't be in the way when I sew on my side borders. You're going to repeat this step on all four corners. All right, my corner blocks are done. So now it's time to sew on my side borders. As a general rule of thumb, we sew the side borders to the quilt first because they are the longest pieces. If we sewed the top and bottom on first, it would make these side borders even longer. Doing these strips first keeps them just a touch smaller and easier to work with. When I reach the bottom on the first side border, I just trim it a little longer than the quilt with my scissors. This lets me stay at the machine and sew the other side border on. Now that my side borders are sewn on, I'm going to press the seams open and get a more accurate trim. Now I'm ready to sew my top and bottom borders on. I like to pin the seams at the corner block to ensure that the seams match up when the border is sewn on. I do this for all four corner blocks before I start sewing. Once they're all pinned, I just sew my borders on the same way I did my side strips, only this time they are already cut to size. Press those seams open and there you go. It's an easy way to do corner blocks. Moving on to border number two. This border has no corner blocks, so it's much simpler. All I'm doing is sewing those long strips that we made earlier to the sides of my quilt. Again, when I reach the bottom of my quilt, I just trim the border strips a little longer than the quilt and do the other side. After both side borders are sewn on, I will press my seams and trim the borders with my rotary cutter. The borders on this quilt really accentuate the design. The way the border number two and corner blocks work together almost seems like it's pointing into the quilt. So it's really directing your eye to all that hard work you did on the blocks and highlighting that focus fabric. So here is the finished quilt top. And you know, it went together so much faster than I expected. And I love how the stars turned out. A very simple project. If you're new to half square triangles, this is a great one to try. And look at these cool corner blocks. I really like the way they fall as well. So now it's time to get it ready for the long arm. So we're gonna go start our backing. It takes three yards of fabric to do a backing for a lap size quilt. I'm going to keep it folded like it would come off the bolt and I'm going to match my selvage edges. On one side of the fabric, there will be a fold. I'm just going to trim this off, which gives me two equal pieces of fabric. I'm going to put right sides of these two fabrics together and line up that selvage again. We're going to cut the selvages off on one side. I kept my fabric laid out to do this but if you have limited space, you could fold the fabric in half and trim it all at once. Just make sure you don't have any wrinkles in the layers. I'm going to sew these pieces together along that edge that I just trimmed the selvage off of. I like to use a half inch seam for extra stability. Press that seam open and you're done. We have a great handout on our website that also steps this out for you if you are looking for some additional help. I am so excited. We have our quilt back from Long Arm, our friendship star. It looks amazing. And we have this great kind of swirly movement pattern that the Long Arm quilter chose and I just love it. It complements the fabric so well. Now, it looks like here we've got some binding to do. So we're gonna put this on the table. We're gonna start the binding, but before we do that, we're gonna look at some other fabric kits. Now we have our quilt on the table here. It looks amazing. The long arm quilter really did a great job. And you can see this gorgeous fabric. Now it has a little bit of a Christmas flare, but not a real strong one, so you can keep it out all winter. And I know we shared this fabric with you earlier and it's just gorgeous, so be sure to go check that kit out. Now let's just kind of flip it over and show you the backing because I really like the backing that we chose for this. It coordinates so well. Now remember, when you're choosing a backing, it's great to get some nice texture, but not something that is too loud or too bold that pulls away from your beautiful quilting. And this also allows you to see the quilting so, so well. I just think it's great. 
And of course you can see that we have our binding that we still need to put on and we're gonna do that in just a moment. Let's look at some other fabric options though for this gorgeous quilt pattern. So here we have some beautiful, very soft, very cozy floral here, which I really, really like. I love the reds, the pinks, and the beiges that are in this fabric. This is our focus. It is gonna go everywhere that you see our red and white flowers here, as well as right in the center of this little star. Now our number two fabric, I love this number two fabric because it picks up the beiges in our focus so well. And of course you can see it has this nice texture to it. It is gonna go in the background of our star here. And then our number three is this great red that picks up the reds in our focus perfectly. And you can see that that's gonna be our star here. Of course it's on the border as well. I love this combination. It's so warm, so rich, and so, so elegant. And you can see how well that looks in our quilt pattern here, the Friendship Star. It is absolutely beautiful. It's just that perfect combination of colors with that beige and that red and white. So I have another grouping of fabric to show you. And I just wanna mention the Friendship Star pattern is a fabulous pattern. It is so versatile. You can put so many different looks in it. We've seen it in two looks with some beautiful florals, some really elegant florals, and now we're gonna go just a little bold here, which I just love, because this pattern is gonna look great in this. We have these great kind of medallion stylized flowers and all of these amazing colors. I just think this is just striking. So this will be our focus fabric. This fabric is gonna go in all of our big blocks here, so it's really gonna capture all those great colors, and as well as just a little taste right in the middle of our star there. Then we have our number two fabric. Now, our number two fabric kind of acts like a stripe, but it has a lot of movement to it. This stripe is made out of dots, and it picks up all of the beautiful colors in our focus fabric. That is gonna be in our background here, everywhere you see the like evergreen leaves on this one. Then our number three fabric, is this not a gorgeous, gorgeous royal blue? It is just so yummy. And as you can see, it picks up all of the beautiful colors in our focus fabric, as well as our number two fabric. This blue is gonna be our star. It's gonna be our half square triangles. It's really gonna pop off of our background, really highlight, give your eye that place to rest, and give it some excitement and it's gonna be a beautiful frame here as well. And wow, look at those pops of those stars. It's just fantastic, I love it. There's so much energy in this quilt, so much movement. I really like this, the colors are gorgeous. So I have one more fabric combination for you, which I think is really cool. This one has a little bit of a patriotic flair, which I really like. So we have our focus fabric here. It's a beautiful navy blue with all of the fireworks going off. And we've got all of these different shades of blue, reds, whites, all the little starburst, really fun. This is gonna go everywhere, the big block here, and then in the middle of our star. And you know, I think the Friendship Star is the perfect pattern to be able to do even a Quilts of Valor or just for a little bit of a holiday summer cheer. So I just really like that. So then we've got our number two here with our focus of fireworks. It's just a white with a really neat dot. This is actually a little square dot and I think it's kind of cool. And this number two fabric goes in the background here everywhere you see the evergreen branches. And as you can see, it's got some good, nice resting spot for your eye. And then for our pop, we have got our red. You can see the shades of red are gonna look so great with our focus, as well as our number two, because we have that little red square dot in that, so it's great. Our star is gonna be out of the number three, the red, our half square triangles, as well as our border. And you can see how wonderful it looks. So as I mentioned, this, is, this would be great quilt for a Quilts of Valor or on the patio for summertime. It's really, really nice and it really pops with the whites and the reds and the blue. Really, really, really like it. So these are some great options for you as far as fabric so that you can see how versatile this pattern is. Now let's go put our binding on. You're going to sew your binding strips together the same way you sewed your border strips. Then you press it. First you will press the whole strip in half 
Then you will press one side in about a quarter inch, matching the middle crease you just made. You're going to press that quarter inch you just did over one more time to get a nice fold. The reason I'm pressing my binding this way is because I'm doing an economy binding. We use this for all of our three yard quilts. Doing your binding this way also keeps you from needing to use a diagonal seam on your binding strips. Angling your seams is very important when you're doing a double fold binding because it keeps the bulk of the seam allowance from all falling in the same place. But with the single fold binding, we don't have to worry about it. So we keep it simple and just do a straight seam. Now that we've pressed our binding, I'm going to sew it to the quilt, right sides together. I put the binding right on the edge of the quilt. I fold the end of my binding under a quarter inch and sew it down. This keeps the raw edges of the binding from being exposed. This is a lot of bulk to work with, so if you have any sort of table or support that you can put beside or behind your machine, this can help hold the weight of your quilt. I always start on the long side. I'm not sure why, it's just what I do. Now I'm about two inches away from the corner. I fold the binding at a 90 degree angle away from the quilt. I use my thumb to just make a little crease. Then I fold the corner back towards the quilt, making the fold even with the raw edge. This creates a small triangle of folded fabric. I fold this triangle towards the corner of the quilt. Then I continue to sew up until my thumb crease. Then I fold the little triangle fold back the opposite direction and begin sewing along the next side of the quilt. You'll do this for each corner. Whenever I'm working on binding and I'm adjusting the quilt, I always take my foot off the pedal so that I don't accidentally push the pedal when my fingers are in the way. Okay, I've made it all the way around my quilt and I'm back to where I started. I'm going to sew over the end where I folded the edge of the binding under a quarter inch. I'm going to keep sewing about a half an inch. Then I'm going to cut off the rest of my binding strip so they're overlapped. We're on the last step, hand binding. I do a simple knot in the end of my thread. I always start at the place I joined my binding strips and I anchor my needle in the seam allowance. I take another stitch on either side of that knot and tie another knot to secure it. I'm going to take a small stitch up through the bottom of my binding fold. This hides the thread in the fold of the binding. Then I'm going to take a small stitch just through the backing layer of my quilt so that you won't see it on the front. I'm going to keep alternating between those stitches along the entire quilt. I use my stitch line as my guide where I sew it. To bind the joining, I'm going to fold the overlapping ends into themselves with the first end we did on the outside, so we have a pretty clean edge. Anytime I have a seam or an overlap like this, I'll start getting a little smaller on my stitches just to make sure that it is anchored well. Let me show you how to miter a corner. I'm going to take a tiny stitch right into the corner of my quilt right on the outside of the seam line. You can see that I'm in the backing layer of my quilt. Keeping the binding side closest to me flat, I'm just going to fold the opposite corner towards me. You can see that it makes a nice straight line. I'm going to take my needle up through the binding layer on the opposite side of the quilt with the needle coming towards me. Then I'm going to take a stitch through the bottom binding layer up towards the corner of the quilt. I'm going to take a stitch back towards the center of the quilt through the top binding layer. This step helps anchor that binding for your nice corner. Next, I'm going to take a stitch through the backing layer on my quilt, continuing on to the next side. I usually take a few smaller stitches to make sure that I have it nice and secured since this is a stress point. You can see on the front side, it looks nice and tidy. You'll keep doing this until your quilt is finished, but I wanna show you how to tie off a thread. 
I take a tiny stitch in my backing layer and then I make a loop and thread my needle through that loop to make a knot. With any thread left, I take a little running stitch in the seam allowance to anchor that long thread tail. When I start again, I will take a tiny stitch to start and tie off like I did in the beginning. Ta-da! It's all done! We've got the binding on and it turned out amazing. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. Now we sent this one to the long arm, but just to let you know, if you want some quilting ideas, we're going to be doing a video just for you to show you some alternative quilting methods, which will be really cool. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that episode. Also, let me know if you have any additional thoughts or questions about the Friendship Star that we've put together here. Be sure and leave a comment down below so that we can address those. We really appreciate it. It's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe, and thanks for sewing along with me.